Today we're going to be talking about the restriction enzyme lab that you're going to be doing next week. So the restriction enzyme is a protein that works as an enzyme and it's going to cut DNA in specific places. So what you're looking at here is a palindrome and what that is is something that's the same in or it's in the opposite direction. So notice here we've got going in this direction G A A T T C and we can come back here's the five prime G A A T T C. So they're going like this, right? And what this is here is the code where the restriction enzyme E R1 will cut. So EcoR1 is a nickname for this particular enzyme, and this is where it's going to cut. So we're just going to erase EcoR1 for a moment because what I'm going to show you is where and how this restriction enzyme will cut. So when it sees this particular palindrome in the DNA code, so when it looks at the entire piece of DNA, every place it sees this, it will cut. And when it cuts, what it's going to do is cut in this fashion. So it's going to go five prime, then we're going to have the G, then there'll be, no, sorry, here we go. Then there'll be a space like this. So here's our cut. So we'll have then A, T, T, C. Oops, I got one more A I'm missing. Here we go. Three prime. All right. And then it's going to go like this. So here will be our G, five prime, and then it'll be C, uh, T, 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 A, A. All right, so here's our three prime. So the cut is going to be right here, or in this case, it will be right here, okay? So when we get that, what we'll wind up with is a sticky end. So one piece of DNA will look like this, where we have a G and then a three prime here. Okay, and so one of our pieces of DNA will go like that. Okay, and then our other piece of DNA will be like this, only it'll have then here our C, or sorry, our G will be here, okay? So you can see that it's gonna cut like this, sort of an uneven L shape or a Z shape, okay? So the important part about that is that it will cut every time it sees that. So if we come over here, we grab this and erase our, our letters and we look at the whole piece of DNA, if we have a linear piece of DNA, so here's our linear piece of DNA, so here's our five prime in and here's our three prime in. And let's say this is the entire piece of DNA. And let's say that it cuts it here, here, and here, okay? Then that means that we're gonna have one, two, three, four pieces. And if we took those pieces and we put them on a electrophoresis gel and we separated them, what would happen is that if our gel looks like this, okay, and we put the DNA in these little wells at the top, and I'll show you how these are made in just a minute. So let's say our sample goes right here, and it's this piece of DNA. The big pieces will stay at the top, and the smaller pieces will run to the bottom. So we would have piece three, which is the largest, and then piece four, which is next, piece one, which is a little larger than two, and our smaller piece would be piece two. And so we'd have one, two, three, four pieces. And here's our piece of DNA, and it's cut up by the restriction enzyme, okay? Now, DNA that is from eukaryotes is linear, and some viral DNA is also linear. In our case, the piece of DNA that's marked lambda is linear, it's a line. So when we look at how it's cut up, it will be cut in this fashion, but we have some other DNA that comes from bacteria that's called a plasmid. And if you remember, bacteria DNA is circular. And so we have two pieces, they're called PUP19 or PBR322. 
And the names of them in this particular case isn't the most important thing. What is important is that it's round, it's circular. And if we cut this again, we're going to cut it one, two, three times. Now one, two, three times. Notice that we're going to have one, two, three pieces. So this piece between these cuts, this piece between this cut and this cut, and then this piece between this cut and this cut. So notice that we cut it three times, but instead of having four pieces, we only have three. So if we have a circular piece of DNA, you'll have one less piece, even with the same number of cuts. So let's say that this one is this plasmid, and so here we would have, it looks like number two is our largest piece, and then number three, and then number one is really small. Let's put it down here, okay? How can we tell what size these pieces are? Well, we'll also run a ladder. And so we'll put an L right here. And what is a ladder? Well, a ladder is where somewhere in a laboratory, they have taken restriction enzymes and they have cut up a piece of DNA. They know exactly how many base pairs are in that piece of DNA and exactly where they'll cut. And they've already done the digestion for you. And they have measured the pieces. So they know how big they're going to be. And so they will actually tell you in a map. So you'll get these pieces on your gel and you can take the map that comes with it and you can actually measure. And they measure it in kilobases, which is like a thousand bases. So let's say this one is four kilobases. That's 4,000 bases base pairs, meaning an A or a T or C and a G. And then let's say this one is 3.5, and this one is 2, and this is 1.5, and this is 0.7, and this is 0.5, and this is 0.2, right? So this one would be, what, 200 base pairs, right? So what we see is that we know the size of these pieces, and we can compare the pieces that we are not sure what the size is with this ladder, okay? So when you run your gel, you'll actually have two different ladders. You'll have two of our circular DNAs and one piece of linear, the lambda, okay? And the restriction enzymes you're gonna use come in a cocktail. So it'll say restriction enzyme, and each cocktail goes to the specific group. So you'll have, for instance, black dot number one, that's the restriction enzyme that goes to and I believe it goes to PBR322. Double check with your TA to make sure, okay? After you've digested your DNA, which you will do as soon as you get in the room, immediately, because you have to put the restriction enzyme in with the DNA and put it into a hot water bath for 45 minutes. So while that's sitting in the hot water bath, that's the first thing you're gonna do. Then you're gonna, after it's in the hot water bath, you're gonna come over and you're gonna pour a gel. So it's kind of like Mangello. You're gonna take some agarose, okay? And you're gonna weigh it out on a scale. You're gonna add it to a liquid buffer. It's a borax buffer, and the buffer has charged particles in it. And those charged particles will allow, ultimately, an electrical charge to run through the fluid. You're gonna take this gel and this fluid, and you're gonna put it into a microwave and melt the uh, agarose. And then you're gonna let it cool down just a little and add some dye to it. It's called CyberSafe. And that dye will stick to the DNA so you'll be able to see it. And then you're gonna put it into this little rig like this. And the rig, notice these black parts come off the end of this rig and they just go like this so that it'll hold a little bit of fluid right here. And when you first put it in there, then you put this, we call it a comb in there. And what it's gonna do is dip into the gel and when it gets solid and you pull this straight out it's going to leave little dents in the jello we call those wells and that's where you're going to put the dna then when you're ready you're going to take off your end very carefully so you don't rip your jello after it's gotten hard and then you're going to take your restriction enzymes after 45 minutes and load them into the wells okay you need to make a paper map of which thing you put into which well so that you know afterwards because you won't be able to tell. And then you're going to add it into this rig. Your TA is going to help you do that. So you're going to add it into the rig 
and it's going to fit in like this. There's six of the groups and six different gels will fit into this rig. And then you're going to put the lid on. Your TA will help with this. And you're going to plug it into an electrical source. And then you're actually going to expose this to electricity. And because the DNA has a negative charge, it will run towards the positive pole because opposites attract. And what will happen is the smaller pieces of DNA will run further through the gel than the larger pieces. The larger pieces get stuck in the molecules that are the agarose, okay? And the smaller pieces kind of, kind of squeeze through and they can go further. And so now they'll separate. We call it electrophoresis. You need to make sure you understand that. And then you'll actually be able to take your gel and put it on a UV light source, which we'll have, and you'll be able to see the bands, okay? This is a really advanced lab. I'm excited that we're going to be able to do it. Make sure you know what every chemical does and what every source of power does. Um, ask a lot of why questions because there will be quizzes, and this absolutely will show up on your final. Wish you all luck, and I hope you enjoy this lab.